It sounds to me like you're saying there's basically no limitations. Your intuition says to what larger language. I don't know of that limitation. So when I currently play with it, it's quite limited. I wish that it was way better. But isn't that your fault versus the large? I don't know. Part? Of course, it's always my fault. There's probably a way to <laughs> make it work better. Is everything your fault? I just want to get you on the record saying that. <laughs> yes, everything is my fault. That works <laughs> doesn't work in my life. At yeah. least that is usually the most useful perspective for myself. Even though with hindsight, I feel no. I sometimes wish I could have seen myself as part of my environment more and understand that a lot of people are actually seeing me and looking at me and are trying to make my life work in the same way as I try to help others. Mm -hmm. And um, making this switch to uh, this level three perspective is something that happened long after my level four perspective in my life. And I wish that I could have had it earlier. And it's also not uh, now that I don't feel like I'm complete. I'm all over the place. That's all. Where's happiness in terms of stages? Is it on three and four? If no. You take that tangent. You can be happy at any stage or unhappy. Oh. Um, but I think that uh, if you are at a stage where you get agency over how your feelings are generated, and to some degree you start doing this when you leave adolescence, I believe, <laughs> that you understand that you're, you're in charge of your own emotion to some degree and that you are responsible how you approach the world, that uh, it's basically your task to have some basic hygiene how in the way in which you deal with your mind. And you cannot blame your environment for the way in which you feel, but you live in a world that is highly mobile and it's your job to choose the environment that you thrive in and to build it. And sometimes it's difficult to get the necessary strength and um, energy to do this and independence and the worse you feel, the harder it is. But um, it's something that we learn. It's also this thing that we are usually incomplete. Right? I'm, I'm a rare mind, which means I'm a mind that is incomplete in ways that are harder to complete. So for me, uh, it might have been harder to initially to find the right relationships and friends that complete me to the degree that I become an almost functional human being. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, man. The search space of humans that complete you is an interesting one. Mm -hmm especially for Yosha Bach, that, that's an interesting, because talking about brute force search in chess, yep. I, wanted, I, wondered, I wonder what that search tree looks like. I think that my rational thinking is not good enough to solve that task. Hmm. A lot of problems in my life that I can conceptualize as software problems and uh, the failure modes are bugs and I can debug them and write software that take care of the missing functionality. But there is stuff that I don't understand well enough to uh, to use my analytical reasoning to solve the issue. And then I have to develop my intuitions and often I have to do this with people who are wiser than me. Hmm. And that's something that's hard for me because I don't have, I'm not born with the instinct to submit to other people's wisdom. Yeah. So w what kind of problems are we talking about? This is stage three, like love? I found love was never hard. Uh, what is hard is, then? Fitting into a world where most people work differently than you and have different intuitions of what should be done. Ah, so empathy. Um, it's also aesthetics. When you come into a world where almost everything is ugly and you come out of a world where everything is beautiful. I grew up in yeah. a beautiful place and as a child of an artist. Yeah. And um, in, in this place, it was mostly nature. Mm -hmm. Everything had intrinsic beauty. And everything was built out of an intrinsic need for it to work for itself. And everything that my father created was something that he made to get the world to work for himself. And I felt the same thing. And when I come out into the world and I am asked to submit to lots and lots of rules, I'm asking, okay, when I observe your stupid rules, what is the benefit? Mm -hmm. And I see the life that is being offered as a reward. It's not attractive. When you were born and raised an extraterrestrial prince in a world full of people wearing suits, so it's a it's a challenging integration. Yes, but it also means that I'm often blind for the ways in which everybody is creating their own bubble of wholesomeness, or almost everybody, and people are trying to do it. And for me to discover this, it was necessary that I found people who had a similar shape of soul as myself. So basically, where I felt. Uh, these are my people, people that um, treat each other in such a way as if they're around with each other for eternity. How long How long does it take you to uh, to detect the geometry, the shape of the soul of another human, to notice that they might be one, one of your kind? 
Um, sometimes it's instantly and I'm wrong, and sometimes it takes a long time. You believe in love at first sight, Yosha Bach? Yes, but I also noticed that I have been wrong. So uh, sometimes I uh, look at a person and I'm just enamored by everything about them. And uh, sometimes this is persists and sometimes it doesn't. And I I have the illusion that it, I'm much better at recognizing who people are as I grow older. Mm, but that could be just cynicism? No. No, it's not cynicism. It's um, It's often more that I'm able to recognize what somebody needs when we interact and how we can meaningfully interact. So it's not better, cynical at all. You're better at noticing. Yes. I'm much better, I think, in some uh, circumstances at understanding how to interact with other people than I did when I was young. So uh, that takes <laughs> us doesn't to... doesn't mean that I'm always very good at it. 